Have you fallen behind in Arrow Fantasy this year and are you looking for a way to catch back up to the crowd? I've got you. I've got five crazy picks, five pods, five players that no one else is really looking at right now that you can grab for your fantasy side to move right up the rankings. First one here, Jake Simpkin, 296K. It's a really good price for a guy who's looking like he could be a big minute hooker in this Manly side. Now, Manly went out and signed Jake Simpkin. They've obviously got some problems with their starting hooker spot. Uh, they've had Carl Lawton playing there. They've had Chan Kam Tong playing there as well. Uh, Simpkin has come in. He played last week. He played 80 minutes in that spot. He only scored about 38 points. The average is 23, but that doesn't really re- reflect what he can do. I think theoretically he could be a 40-point average for you. Now, you add on to that the fact that he plays for Manly now as well. So he's not at the Tigers. He's at Manly. Uh, they play round 16 and round 19 major buy rounds. So if you need a hooker for 296K, this is absurd value. This is absolutely insane. I love this option. Uh, I think if you can make this work and if your team needs a hooker right now, go get him. If you don't need a hooker, I would wait two weeks because they do have the buy next weekend in Manly. And I would buy him in round 18 instead. A option here. The only, stop, only thing stopping him from A plus is the fact that Kam Tong is on the Shen Kam Tong is on the uh, uh, the bench there, so he's probably going to steal some minutes from uh, Simkin this week. Next guy up here, we've got Sean Johnson, and at 750k, this is a pretty cheap price for a guy who you often pay 850k plus for. Now 750k, 54.8 average. I think that's going to go right up here. So I think as we get out of the Origin period, he'll be closer to 800k. His average will be closer to 60 points. I think it's going to start this week. So he's got the Titans this week. Titans, again, I talked about it before on that buyers video as well for fantasy, but they are very under strength right now. Can Sean Johnson turn up against the Titans? Can he carve these guys up? Can he take advantage of the, the weaker forward pack they're presenting this week? I think he can. I think he's going to score a couple of tries in this game. I think he's going to be everywhere, right? So my view is that Sean Johnson is a good option this week. If you need a half and you want a pod, most people aren't looking at him because he has a massive break even. So he probably loses cash this week. But if you want that pod option, I love Sean Johnson. Get on it. Third option here, Jack White. And a bit less of a pod because we talked about him in the last couple of weeks. Uh, he's just a really solid option that is outside of the norm though. So you've got a 32.1 average. It's a much higher average. It's a 46 average historically actually when he plays in the six jersey. Uh, last week he scored 30 points. The week before he scored 40, sorry, 57. So he's had some big scores and some pretty average scores. The way I view Jack Whiten is that he's a 25 to 30 point scorer. And then you add attacking stats onto that. So I think he'll average closer to 40 points in the sixth jersey across the year, maybe 45 points um, and at 426K with round 16, round 19 coverage. And with dual position, this is a pretty good option. This is a pretty good option. You keep him for the rest of the year, even with that coverage. Fourth option here, Jeremy Marshall King. And this is a super pod because we're talking about a few guys here. Most coaches are going for Reed Marnie. They're going for Harry Grant. They're going for, you know, Jaden Braley historically as well. Um, they're getting on to, you know, players like Wade Egan even right now, which is a, also a mega pot actually. But Jerry Marshall King is a guy who's been largely ignored by most fantasy coaches. The Dolphins have a great buy schedule. You're paying pretty much full price for this guy. He's probably a tier below the top keepers, but he does have that big attacking upside. So if you back him and you back the Dolphins to make a run through the end of the season, you could go much worse than Jeremy Marshall King as a big pod here. Finally, this is one that I love. And this is this one's totally insane, but it's Jordan Rapana, 496K. He's got the Tigers this week. He scored 60 points last week. And he's played against the Tigers in the past at fullback and scored 100 plus. So what I see here is a guy who has enormous upside. I think there's a decent chance that he out of nowhere will come out and be the top scorer in fantasy this year this week. He could also totally blow it up and score 10 points. So the the range of scores for Jordan Rapana is super, super varied. But for mine, I think he's an option where if you wanted a super pod, you could do a lot worse than Jordan Rapana. Uh, C plus grade because it is incredibly risky and he's probably not a full-time keeper. But again, if you're short on cash, you want that super pod. I love Jordan Rapana. I sponsor the, uh, I'm a big fan of that. You have my permission to go crazy on this one and get Jordan Rapana. Anyway, that is the crazy picks, the pods for round 16. Hopefully one of these guys tickled your fancy and you want to do something a bit off the beaten path. Uh, Best of luck this week, everyone. Remember, only your starting 13 will count this week. Set your captain, set your vice captain, make sure they're on point, and I will see you next week. Peace out.